U.S. President Barack Obama has praised Secretary of State Hillary Clinton for her work, stressing that she has been one of the finest in U.S. history. Obama and Clinton appeared in a joint televised interview, which comes as America's top diplomat prepares to step down. For some analysis on that, we are now joined live by journalist and anti-war activist Don DeBar. Uh, Don, thank you very much for being back with us. Now, you... You certainly, you saw this interview. The president may have praised the secretary of state, but what is your assessment of Clinton's achievements in the position, including on the Middle East policy? Well, look at the condition of the world right now and know that Hillary Clinton has been active, active for four years. The really disheartening thing about the show, which is what it was shown on 60 Minutes uh, exclusively in the United States, was... Um, they spent an awful lot of time trying to explain to people how these two former primary campaign 2008 adversaries could work together for four years, where most of the rest of the world has coalition governments of you know, all kinds of adversarial interests sitting down and hashing things out and making things go forward. Um, Hillary Clinton has... Uh, really, the biggest achievement uh, was the takeover of Libya, and the foothold in Africa for AFRICOM. And Barack Obama more or less uh, said the same thing, saying if it wasn't for Hillary Clinton, we wouldn't have achieved the success in Libya, which now, of course, is being used as an excuse for French intervention in Mali and uh, laying out the groundwork for much more aggressive action in Northern Africa. Now, you mentioned that this was a bit of a show. Uh, what do you make of the timing of this interview, given that just last week, Clinton took responsibility for the deadly attack in Benghazi? You were just mentioning the situation in Libya. Acknowledging the mistakes of American foreign policy there. You know, she avoided testimony uh, or testifying in front of a, a hostile, you know, quote unquote, Republican committee in Congress over what happened in Benghazi. The, the American ambassador to Libya uh, post um, Jamaharia was killed. He was identified by people all over Libya for a long time as being one of the CIA's point people in Libya and one of those most responsible for the American intervention there. The fact that this country, which was bombed for eight months by NATO, by the U.S. and its allies, with thousands of people dying, many homes and the infrastructure that was built up in the last 40 years being devastated in front of the people, shouldn't surprise anyone that there would be people that were angry over that, that might want to kill those they identified as being responsible. Yet, the entire presentation here and over the last couple of weeks has been something quite different. Clinton avoided the actual testimony until everyone else had testified, which is what any witness wants to do, because then you can't be contradicted by any subsequent testimony. And um, at this point in time, she's leaving with glasses. We were reminded several times that are consequent to the uh, brain injury she suffered that didn't allow her to testify. And now she's being, you know, patted on the back by Obama for a success in Libya that she still hasn't accounted for the failure of. It, it's pretty, I don't know, it's, it's like watching teenagers. <laughs> now, you and I have discussed this particular topic in the past, so I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this now. Obama has declared it a success that his administration has wound down two wars and dismantled the al-Qaeda leadership. What's your take? The United States is now at war with more nation states than it ever has been since 1945 in the aggregate. And whether you consider drone attacks an act of war under the old rules, um, certainly drone attacks are taking place in countries that uh, are not included in that total. So the world is more at war than it's been since 1945. In terms of the number of people that die every day, in terms of the things that get blown up, in terms of the uh, assertion of one national, extrinsic national interest over other national interests on the ground. And so uh, for, him, for him to claim that, you know, I've wrapped up the wars, things are okay, is a joke. But it makes sense, too, because the two things that mobilized Democrats against the Bush administration, the two wars, were the primarily the uh, Iraq war and also the Afghanistan war. And now that those are moving off the radar in the news media here, anti-war Democrats are going to sleep. And that allows these people 
broad movement across the world to continue wars as long as they don't make Democratic activists upset. And briefly, some Republicans see Hillary Clinton as a very strong candidate if she is to run for the next presidency of the United States. What's your opinion on this one? I hope they're wrong. <laughs> I don't want to see a Republican president elected, but I also don't want to see Hillary Clinton elected, which would be, again, a Republican president. I have a friend who's a Republican who reminds me, when you run a Republican against a Republican, the, the Republican always wins. Hillary Clinton's husband was the premier Republican president of the late 20th century. He did away with welfare as we knew it. He started war again in Europe. He did away with the possibility of tamping down the military after the fall of the Soviet Union. Uh, Hillary Clinton is more of the same, and we've seen it with her tenure as Secretary of State. All right. I appreciate your thoughts on the subject. Don DeBar, journalist and anti-war activist, thanks very much. Always a pleasure to have you with us here on RT.